Okay, we are at section uh, 31.5, oscillations in an, R, in an LC circuit, excuse me, oscillations in an LC circuit. And let's bring up the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, if you recall, the energy stored in a capacitor, the electrical energy stored in a capacitor was uh, Q squared max divided by 2C, where C is the capacitance. Um, so we have energy stored in, uh, in a mag magnetic uh, field, and we have energy stored in a capacitor. So if we, if we put a capacitor and an inductor together, um, there should be an exchange of energy, whereas the total, uh, because of the conservation energy, the, um, the change in energy of the electric field uh, plus the change in energy of the magnetic field should equal zero. In other words, when one increases, the other should decrease and vice versa. Uh, okay, so let's take a, a, the, uh, uh, the energy for a uh, capacitor is Q squared over 2C, and the energy for an inductor is 1 half uh, Li squared. Uh, let's take uh, the derivative DDT of the equation delta UE plus delta UB, and you'll see that uh, uh, you get uh, uh, Q, uh, QC uh, DQDT plus uh, LI DIDT. Uh, well, D, uh, DQDT is I, and uh, DQDT is I, and DIDT is D squared Q uh, DT squared, and the second derivative. Um, so if you uh, uh, rearrange, now since uh, DQ dt is equal to i, we can take that q divided by c times i, um, and if we solve for uh, uh, the di dt, which is of the form d squared q d uh, t squared, we'll get uh, uh, d squared q dt squared is equal to minus 1 over lc uh, q. Um, the, uh, because you end up with with uh, uh, QC, basically QCI divided by LI, so uh, the I's cancel and you're left with QC divided by L, so that's Q over LC, but it's, a, it's minus because of the, uh, um, you take it one to the one side. Now, uh, if we look, at the equation d uh, d squared q dt squared equals minus one lcq, which we just derived. It's very similar to a, uh, a simple harmonic motion equation, uh, where k is the spring constant, m is the mass, and x is the distance. Uh, and from that, we get a sinusoidal um, equation: x equals a cosine omega t plus the phase angle phi, um, where a is the, the max extension of our, in this case, a spring. Well, we have the, uh, uh, where q is the same as uh, x, the charge is the same as x, and q max is the max charge, uh, cosine omega t plus phi, where um, omega, in this case, is equal to the one over the square root of LC, and, uh, IDQ, the current is equal to uh, minus omega. Uh, in other words, if Q is equal to Q max cosine omega t plus theta, you take the derivative of cosine, um, you end up with uh, minus cosine omega. Uh, I'm sorry, minus uh, omega cosine omega t plus phi. So, and, uh, so you end up with minus I max times sine omega t plus phi. Uh, let's look at let's look at a a, a uh, another um, uh, I'm going to look at Walter Fent because he has a nice little demo here. Uh, let's um, reset this and start this, and you can see. Um, it's in slow motion, but you, basically what's happening uh, 
is you have the capacitor charging and you have the inductor, uh, capacitor charging and discharging and you see the inductor, the magnetic field in the inductor building up and collapsing. Let's change it to super slow, let's reset it and let's go to slow motion and let's watch it. Uh, we've charged the capacitor and now uh, we flip it over to the um, inductor side and the inductor starts charging up as the capacitor uh, discharges and we see the, car the current goes in one direction. Now the, the inductor collapses and is charging the um, capacitor in the opposite direction uh, in the, you know, now it's, uh, uh, it's letting off its um, charge and now building charge in the other way. And we can see it oscillating back and forth um, with the magnetic field changing in the inductor and the uh, charge in the capacitor building, you know, so it's an exchange of the charge in the capacitor and the magnetic field and it's going back and forth. And I'll send you this link um, so that you can play with it and play with the different values uh, and see what happens. Now, let's stop this share and uh, go back to the uh, inductor. And they're comparing the, the spring, the spring oscillation going back and forth. You, you have um, the energy, uh, but in, in this case, in the uh, spring potential energy, changing back and forth. You've got the energy in the inductor uh, and the energy in the capacitor exchanging um, uh, exchanging energy. And uh, so the charge Q and the current I are 90 degrees out of phase with each other. Um, and the sum of the two curves is constant and is equal to the total energy in the circuit. Uh, so uh, the energy uh, this is an idealized case where, you know, conservation of energy, no energy is lost. And we'll learn that there is a uh, loss of energy. Um, but uh, uh, so Q, Q max squared divided by 2C um, is equal to Li, uh, Li max squared divided by 2. So um, if you recall, one half. Uh, Q squared divided by C energy in the uh, capacitor and energy in an inductor is one half Li squared. Um, now, at an instant of time during the oscillations um, of, of an LC circuit, uh, an LC circuit, the current is at its maximum value. At this instant, what happens to the voltage across the capacitor? Um, well, the capacitor doesn't, uh, if it's fully charged, there's no current. So if the current is at maximum, then the capacitor has to be zero value. It is zero. Now, let's look over here. Now consider an instant when the current is momentarily zero. Uh, describe the magnitude of the voltage across the capacitor at this instant. If the current is momentarily zero, that means that the capacitor has fully charged. So it has its maximum value. Oops, there it is. Um, okay, we'll start, stop there. And this time we're gonna take the same circuit, but we're gonna add a, a resistor uh, in it.